I'd first uh, like to uh, welcome everyone to the FJMC special series this evening on the uh, wartime uh, direct experiences that uh, uh, Alex uh, Keiterman faced when he was simply uh, spending a few weeks enjoying uh, the state of Israel with his wife and family on a personal vacation. And lo and behold, everything changed on October 7th, 2023. By way of introduction, I'd like to uh, first introduce myself. I'm Norwin Marins, FJMC Midwest Region. And this evening, our guest is going to be Alex Keiterman. Dr. Keiterman received his PhD in engineering from Academy of Science in um, Moscow, Russia. He's devoted his engineering and academic career to new technology, equipment, and software. He's received more than 50 patents and published multiple papers and research journals presented at multiple domestic and international conferences and symposium. He's currently the international VP for the Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs, previous to that president of the tri-state region. And he began his involvement uh, many years ago with Pittsburgh's Beth Shalom Men's Club. Alex and his family uh, moved uh, from Russia to the United States in 1989. Mm. Without further ado, I'd like to uh, turn the program uh, and get uh, the reflections uh, specifically from uh, Alex. My name is Alex Kiederman. I want to a little bit background. Uh, me, my wife, and my son went on vacation to Israel. And we decided to stay, you know, we'll look in good place. It was before war, of course. We decided to stay a small city located very close to Tel Aviv called Bat Yam. Beautiful city. We rent apartment, three minutes walk to see and really have a good time. Look how this beautiful was before war. This is beach that I take picture to police officers they stay. And people enjoy, you can see on the right picture, enjoy the flying, swimming, everybody has a good time. And by the way, when, this time on vacation, because we want to be on all Jewish holiday in Israel. It should be interesting experience, at least for us. Uh, of course, we take a tremendous number of very interesting trip. We, did, we didn't went first time, it's multiple time in Israel, but this we want to concentrate more on Jewish life. We went to Galilee, and we look on Jewish history of Galilee, Fat, Golan Heights, and multiple places, the stop place. You can see on this picture on the left hand, it's a Golan Heights. It cannot be more beautiful. On the right is an old synagogue, more than 2,000 years old, and then start to restore the synagogue. Then we start to particularly interesting who uh, compile Mishnah. And we go to place the Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi goes through all his life. If you remember, Sanhedrin was exiled from Jerusalem after Jewish rebellion against Rome in age 66, 70. And Sanhedrin moved on these small places and we stop in these places. It's absolutely amazing. If you think about uh, this place, in particular, personally, me and family was impressed place we call Beth Shearim was the home of great rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, who compiled Mishnah. We're learning right now, and we see with our eye this place. It was extremely, extremely interesting, very educated. And this is place was cave of uh, where he was um, funeral. If you go inside, it was multiple cave. But you go inside, you can see this with your eye. With your eye, and we spent whole day uh, uh, look on this cave. And this is historically, it's really a place where he was uh, born. Then after this, we uh, stopped by a place is called Tel Sake. It's a place with main battle of Yom Kippur War. And think about it, it was 11,000 Syrian soldiers in 900 tanks. It was only 60 IDF troopers yeah. and 45 tanks yeah. ratio. And yeah. 32 soldiers lost their life. What is, of course, it's, we spent whole day walking there. But what's interesting, where we start talk with 
person, you can see this person with white head close to me. His name is Dan Almad, Almagor. He, during this war 50 years ago, was 20 years old paratrooper. And his task after identify body and he insert name of each person. It was so emotional for him that after this, he start his foundation for his own money, he produced a movie. And then he uh, his foundation make this as a huge uh, commemoration of this. Particularly he was very proud. He put the biggest flag he can do. Then he said, every morning, Syrian supposed to look Israeli flag. We spent two or three hours with him. It was amazing. He did small detail what's happened this, how this, uh, how many was, I think 62 soldiers, 32 was killed, but 28 survived, and they survived. He gave every detail, talking with him, and on the right hand is his wife, and she fully supports him. He's right now in the United States, and he's a big banker, but he put a lot of effort and he put a lot of own money to create this place. And he's waiting. Again, he talks so much, in particular about this flag. It was very interesting. Then we spent, because it's a high, high holiday, we spent Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur in Batyam. Uh, you know that all transportation stop, and mostly people walking on the street. I look at this, and children, you can imagine running any bike running on center of any street. It was a lot of Ethiopian Jews. I didn't know that they saw me. You can see on the left, there's a children <laughs> laughing, driving, all day long, from morning to night. And people come from Jew, from uh, Shul, of course. And again, you can see it's in Yom Kippur, uh, September 23rd. This is main street. You can see blue uh, decoration on this street. Again, different people, different color, extremely friend, friendly. And you can see this uh, lady sitting on street reading book, religious book, of course. Very interesting Ethiopian uh, uh, lady wearing this different dress. I never seen this before. Very respectful. Everybody respectful, everybody smiling. Or he is a, everybody waiting for shofar. You can see people staying outside, full of street again, children running, and you can see children again. Any children, you can see this. From very orthodox to completely not orthodox, all together playing. It was, it was impressive. Impressive, you can feel your belonging. You can feel that this is nation. Then we go to Sukkot, we go to Jerusalem. And you can see on this picture how it was unusual. Unusual meaning, again, variety of people. It's very orthodox in Jerusalem, to completely not orthodox. But anyway, look again on Jerusalem, on Sukkot. On left, you can see again all decoration on, again, on the right, music playing. If I turn it, you can see how nice Jewish music playing. All street clothes, no transportation. So when you hear me sing, Play a song for me, Applejack. Oh, I play a jacket. It would ease. But if you heard, and you know that kind of thing was expressed far more than one, it's never done. 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 It's never Wonderful was time in uh, Jerusalem. Then I want to switch a little bit more personal. You can see me with white head, and this is my cousin. Uh, he living in uh, Jerusalem or outside of Jerusalem, Kwar Adumim. And he's a physician, he's a doctor. And he invited us to spend Sukkot in his house. And you can see on the left hand, and he lives in 20 minutes from Jerusalem. They create a city called Kfar, Kfar Adumim, around 500 families. And they have, obviously, security protection, all professional people. 
uh, view from his house on left picture is very unusual. And this is labeled, this is somebody can read Hebrew, it's called my last name Kiderman. I never see written in Hebrew. That's why it was very interesting, very interesting to see. We spent a uh, uh, day with him and then we spent uh, support and we stay, uh, stay in his house. And this view from his house, where I take, we took pictures in the morning. It's a very famous Judea, Judean hill. It's absolutely perfect view. And I will tell you why I'm talking about him. And that war started. Now you understand how wonderful it was. Everybody has a good time, smiling. Uh, we went to market, million people. It was wonderful. Uh, October 7, suddenly I can hear uh, around 7 o'clock noise. I didn't understand what the noise coming. I think I forgot to close window, something I saw. Then another my cousin called, he said, immediately go to Mamad. I asked him, what is Mamad? He says, you know what room in your apartment with steel door, it's called Mamad. Okay, we go to Mamad. And, and uh, after this, we loaded, uh, he asked me to load it in our phone, uh, special apps, and you can see what show up on these apps. Apps, apps show messages, the rocket and missile fire, and show place where you stay. We say Batyam, and they tell you have one and a half minutes to go to protected room, and you need to stay for uh, ten minutes. The more interesting is my phone still connect. As of yesterday, again I see these messages, and after this message, you can read what this is sending to you. They say so many times what alert and mis uh, missiles. They're telling this on the right hand, on the right hand, describe what guideline to do. Outdoor only 30 people allow beaches all close. Not allow anybody to beach. Funeral, because after 1,400 people lost life and Israel, small country, well, a, a huge number of funerals. Anybody we talk, we go one, two, three funeral. And funeral was limited number of people. All college was a closed, school was closed. And this again messages, you can see they put description what to do. If you have mamat, mamat is this, uh, if you're living in modern apartment, one of room, especially built with steel door and steel windows, then you can stay in this room. But not so many mamat available. Mostly people go to a uh, stairway and stay in this. And it's, uh, what we live three, four, five times a day, close to a south, people stay whole night. Uh, and if it's old houses, people need to go to basement, it's some kind of protection shelter. And they have one minute, and if you're 60, 70 years old, if you're 20 years old from fifth floor for one minute, minute and a half, it's very difficult to do. Very difficult to do. Uh, example, we went on uh, dinner, and one of our relatives, again, uh, siren, and we go to stairwell, and all neighbor come, and children was crying. It was heartbreaking to see, particularly, I remember one young girl, maybe, 10 years old, and she was hysterical. She's so much afraid. Her mom tried to cool her down, but it's, and again, it's continuous, continuous, continuous. And if you're driving, you need to drop your car, go so many meters away from car, lay, lay down on the ground to cover your head. It's all regulation. And this how I look after, after a couple of days. It's the same place that we're staying, but young, uh, on, Brook boardwalk was young soldier, always machine gun, mostly holding this way, ready to shoot. If you see his finger, he's holding this way. On left, uh, you can see they take all the protection and they build small, I don't know, some kind of room. They have lunch. They're eating together this. But you're going, and a lot of young girl, for me, was see a girl a little bit bigger than machine gun, and she carried this machine gun. A, and this is heavy. This is some kind of Kevlar, Kevlar or ceramic protection. Helmet, they have <laughs> weapons fully, fully loaded, everything. 
This was how it looked now. It today looks the same. And we count the evening you grew in 20, 25 people with guns, uh, uh, some police cars with machine gun on top going around beach. You can see how beach look in this case. Before was thousands of people, nobody not allowed and street completely empty. Before, again, this was 1,000 people, now nobody. Everybody go to store, if you need to buy something, you go back. And there's another picture, you can see only one cat staying. They put this, don't go to beach. After three, four days, the people became relaxed. Obviously, beautiful weather, everybody wants to go to beach. They put big signs that it's up to you if you want to go, but no uh, protection on beach. And if something happens, it's you responsible. Two, three people I went to go to beach, mostly, yeah, mostly no. Street is empty. And it was very interesting. It's, uh, I think, only Israel. You can see this piano. And everybody who won't play, a lot of people playing, beautiful music. It was completely empty, except you can see this boat and you can see this machine gun because they're afraid uh, these terrorists can come from sea. That's why it was people with, or not people, soldier, soldier, police officer with guns was on beach on board yeah, we did. We were on it. This was, and, uh, this is uh, Friday night. People bring food, a lot of food, bring food, and again, the soldiers, they have a place to eat, and they eat this. And somebody brought this uh, instrument to start to play for them. And I want to entertain soldiers. That's why people trying to do it. It was very interesting to see. People bring big bags of food and give the soldier. Somebody brought pizza, some, somebody I see small, bring small grill, start to grill. That's why soldier has full support. This I want to talk about cousin, what I mentioned. Again, his name is my name, Alexander Kiderman, and he's an older volunteer in army. I can, uh, he interview with his, uh, Israel T TV, and I want to show you is then I have translation who, who is not understand Hebrew. Please, Sasha or Alexander Kiderman, Ben Shishi Petition of Bates, in the Kfaradumim, who wait care of Eva Malay Adumi, Shivana Kadir. As a Milhamot Kavita Nadim. You have Kim Kippur as adapted. He, Aitima Huyan, with Safon of the Rome, he adapted with Gadi Kokasi. Yaze Abardak. יותר מאשר עכשיו, בשבעים ושמונה סיימתי סדיר, מאז אני במילואים. זה קצת דומה ליום כיפור מבחינה זאת שאנחנו היינו בטוחים שיש פה גדר, בלתי חדירה וחכמה מאוד. מה לדעתך היתרונות והחסרונות השירות בגילך? ייתכן שיתרון זה ניסיון, גם בצבא, גם בביצוע. החיסרון שאני... איתי יותר, פחות מוקשר אירופים. מה הנכדים חושבים על זה שסבא במילואים? אני לא ראיתי אותם מאז שסבא למי. קצת בוואטסאפ, זה הכל. כמובן שזה מהותי, סבא הוא גם כשאני עובד במרפאה, זה מהותי, כל יום. כל יום יש משהו קשה, ובלתי צפוי, בוודאות, מבחינה זאת זה דומה. Okay, can you hear me? Now a translation. Uh, his name is Alexander Kiderman. He is 69 and a half years old for Kvar Damim, and he is a doctor in Malem Adumim, and he has four children and seven grandchildren. His war experience, he participated in any war from Yom Kippur War. He was soldier in North and uh, in 78, he discharged, discharged for activity and became volunteer. He going for any, as a physician, as a volunteer, participate in any military activity. And they asked him, what do you think about age? He said, my age is 
uh, helped me because he has tremendous experience and disadvantage, he said, and became a little bit slow. They asked him how he uh, kids, his grandchildren. And he said, yes, he talked with them, what's up? It's stressful, but he said, my hospital, what he working with physicians, stressful for too. And this about him, and uh, I talked with him this morning. Uh, he said, uh, if he's in Gaza now, in Gaza, they're not allowed to talk from Gaza. He said, every time you go to Gaza, you give your phone, because somehow for a point of humility, you cannot hold your phone in Gaza itself. But uh, he said he's uh, this morning, he went out of Gaza or relax and eat, relax, and then he called me. I asked him, how are you? He said, I'm fine. He don't give more detail. I asked how's your family, his son, who is a physician, He's driving tank, and he said that as so far he's okay. He's okay. And I asked him how it's going. He said going okay. It's a little bit slow, but it's going okay. Then I want to say another my nephew who is not in army. Uh, he decided it's two days ago, three days ago. Uh, he decided to take friends, and they. They take van, uh, loaded food, and bring to Gaza. On Gaza, and they feed two hundred more soldiers. And he said, "I'm so proud." He bought only good steak, only good chicken, only good chicken wing. Something this. He, he sent short video, and he said, "All soldiers enjoy because it was very good food. Very good food." And this is flying back from Ben Gurion. It is my family, and it's M is really high. And this is a big poster in Batyam. Together we will win. If you read Hebrew, and atmosphere you need to understand the truck driving garbage has a big Israeli flag and something we put in. We we win. And these are like, it's not Shabbat Shalom, but I like how they did the Shabbat Shalom. That's it, I'm glad to answer question or something, discussion, anything you want. But again, atmosphere change, obviously it's a huge tragedy, but they somehow tragedy put these people together. Israel people together. They're not discussing politics now, left and right. You know how horrible was this political divided, much less divided, particularly in Presne, garbage truck with big flag with enthusiasm. And everywhere. Every grocery store has a bag. And if you want to leave some for soldier people buying and put some food here for go to army. And again, talking to my cousin. I said, do you have enough food? He said, more than enough. Absolutely more than enough. Then he complained he didn't have, to, he's smoking pipe. Then, yeah, somebody gave him, he said, it's enough for a very, very long time. That's why it's, 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 it's change, and very positive change. This I want to share with you. How it was before and how much it changed now. Alex, um... That was a very good presentation. I appreciate it. it was your cousin, uh, it, was he from Russia also? My cousin, uh, he's by uh, Zionist. He left Russia. He was 17 years old. He go to Jerusalem. He, 17 years, he, he spoke Hebrew very well. And he uh, go back to college in Jerusalem, became physician. And then he go to army and then he married. And his wife, similar than he, they decided to go to this territory, found similar people, and they start the city. And all his life, he's, uh, he is, again, doctor, soldier, and he has a wonderful family, too. And, and Alex, for me, think about this. 
for example, you're going morning, you go to office and your wife remind you, do you forget your kid, do you forget your lunch and his wife that we stay last time, she said, did you take your key? Yes. Did you take your lunch? Yes. Did you take your gun? It's a part of routine. He carried a gun with him every time. And he said, I'm very proud. I carry a very small nine millimeter before machine gun is more difficult. He said, I'm old to carry a machine gun. Hmm. Alex, how soon on October the 7th hmm? did you, how soon on October the 7th did you realize what was going on and the magnitude of what was going on? I, I didn't realize magnitude, no. A cousin called, he said, okay, rocket going go this room, but didn't realize, no. It's, 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 when, when, you when did you realize? realize? Hmm? When did you know? Then I told TV, uh, that local TV, they start to talk, something happened. Then I called this cousin, uh, but I showed his picture. Who knows? He knows much more because he involved military. He got a huge tragedy happened. We can't figure out. The next day, he said, it looks like they broke wall in 80 places, according to him. It's, it's, uh, and then probably two, three days. Still, it's realized that how big, how bad is it? No, it's longer. Without attitude, okay, okay, noise, big deal. Just go to beach. No, 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 no. Beach closed. It's it's take time. You can probably two three days. Maybe how long, how long did you stay in Israel before you came back to the states? Three weeks. Oh, three weeks. Okay. We stayed three weeks before and two weeks. We we supposed to sp spend more, but we changed tickets. And I consider me and my family very lucky. By absolutely chance, we bought tickets on the LL. Because all U.S. companies not flying, and where I call the embassy, is they offer you can go to Levan and from Levan flying. I said thank you. And then they offer to go to uh, uh, where is this another place? And it's no, I, I told you we can Please. lucky we can fly from Tel Aviv to Boston. For everyone's edification, I'm, this is Ken. I was in Eastern Europe when this happened. And on Friday, I was in Berlin on Friday, October 27th. We were at the Progressive Shul, not the Masorti Shul, the Progressive Shul in Berlin. And the rabbi um, read out all the names and said Kaddish for all the victims of the Hamas attack. Um, there were 40 Americans there, plus the members of the Berlin Progressive Jewish community on Shabbat Eve services on that Friday. Um, it was something else. Um, when he did um, Kaddish for the victims of Hamas attack in Berlin. Um, we were traveling on a Cantor's mission at that time um, in Eastern Europe. So it was it, something incredible. I just want to let people know that. Be aware that the Jews of, Ber of Eastern Europe had signs all over Eastern Europe, Am Yisrael High. No, this tragedy is putting people together. I can see before conversation about politics, okay, left, right, left, right, it's, it's a sudden stop. And question, what's happened, we will figure out later. How this tragedy can happen, how they miss this. And again, asking the same cousin, he said, we'll figure out later, let's finish. First, very good attitude. What are you doing now to help support the community there? I mean, you have family there. So what are you doing at this point in time besides obviously making donations? Is there anything else you're doing at this point in time to help the community? You know, when Israel itself, this is what's bad because you don't know what to do. Money, and they're not talking about donation money. Because I asked him, do, can you take some volunteer activity? No, they said we have enough volunteers. That's why, you know, you, you don't know what to do. You're helpless. Uh, Barry Ballack from Chicago. Yes, Barry. Were there, <clears throat> were there any special uh, security measures taken to protect tourists in Israel while you were there? Not really. No. But you have to follow. You go for on board work. Suddenly, siren. You you follow as the people. Running, you know, some nothing special. I can't see that. No. No, I told you, we call embassy and they said, you register, we have chance, we can help you, but 
really. It was a little bit embarrassing. I don't know. It's an embassy from Argentina. They bring plane removal from Canada. Yeah. Not from US. From Florida was a couple flights. I know. <laughs> from Florida, yes. Was it hard for you to go home? I told you, I'm lucky because we have uh, this ticket from Elal. And yeah. the call, can they change? They change. They change. Yeah. This case, uh, I think it's luck. What is FJMC doing at this point in time besides the letters and the information that's going out? The gentleman from, from FJMC, what, what, what are you guys folks doing at this point in time besides well, obviously watching and waiting? So we're not watching and waiting. What are you doing? Um, so there's an emergency team that was put together. Okay. Number one, we'd like everybody on this call to be in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday. Uh, check with your local federation about buses and other transportation. Uh, the FJMC is rallying our troops to be there. Two is we've put out on a regular basis, and you can go to our website and download it. Uh, we put out on a regular basis a, a toolkit of things that you need to be doing and should be doing. Um, and I can, uh, there, there are four basic things. Uh, one is show up in Washington, please. What's the date? Uh, yeah. Tuesday, Tuesday the 14th. Tuesday. There's a major rally. We're hoping for, uh, the, the American Jewish community is hoping for a quarter of a million people. Oh. It's very important to show our legislators to show the world that we're there. There's been large Palestinian demonstrations and to come with an equal size, if not bigger, to make a strong statement. There'll be plenty of security. It's being well organized by the Jewish Federation of North America, the Council of Presidents, all of, and all of us are, are participating. So show up, please. Go. You should have gotten an email today. If you didn't, let me know. And I'll make sure you get it. Uh, I see Eric nodding his head. Two is... Um, Continually write to your uh, congressman, the, the, the president, your senators, to thank them for their support, unless you're in certain districts, but we won't go there. <laughs> um, thank uh, continually. It does make a difference what you said. You can say, Israel, thank you. They're counting the volume. And we've got to create, continue that noise. Very important. Three, contribute. Contribute to causes that can support Israel. Um, uh, Mogan David Adom, your local Jewish Federation uh, a campaign. That, that there's, a, there's a big need. You know that what, what they talk about. You know the people in Gaza being relocated. Over four hundred thousand Israelis have been relocated to places like a lot. Uh, well, that sounds nice because a lot's a resort and they want out and to, uh, and to other places. And it's taking a tremendous toll. Plus. Obviously, the the areas where they were victimized on the seventh. Uh, so that 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 that's three, um, and four is if you know people in Israel, if you have relatives, you do work with people. If you ever said hello to an Israeli, you have their email there. Just drop them, continually drop them notes, telling them we're thinking about them. This is a very difficult time for them, and we've got to stay strong. And then I, and then five is go to your non-Jewish friends and ask them and explain to them what's going on. So, you know, when the Palestinians chant from the from the river to the sea, that means the extermination of the Jewish people. Tom, I want to add this. We're doing exactly what you ask, what you tell, calling people. Uh, one was heartbreaking. One of all our friends, and she's living in South, and she's a social worker with old people on Gaza very close to Gaza. First time we called her, she's crying because some of your client was killed. And I think she has no more mad, forget about it. It's a relatively poor community. She said, laying down floor and she heard it, the terrorists walking around. But she is her husband, okay. And then we called multiple times to support. This call, and she was very appreciated. You listen to her complaint, talking with her, asking questions. She was very, very appreciated. Very appreciate this good, good example. Do you know how many Jews, uh, how many Israelis are? I mean, I I ran into a number of Israeli expats that were in Europe and they were not able to go back. Their companies were shut down, and they're in either 
they're living with friends now in Ukraine or in Europe or uh, they're coming to the States. Um, and do you know how many are, how many, I mean, there's 400,000 you said that were being moved to a lot, but the question is how well, many- A lot in, a, in other parts of, of the country. In other parts of Israel, but how many are being moved? How many, do, we, do we know how many Israelis are overseas now that are not so, going back because they can't go back at this point? Well, no, they're now able to come back. There, there was a priority that was established. The, the top priority was military folks, people right. who were had it, they, they got the first crack to come back, and then they, now others are coming back. Um, some the other thing that we that we're I'm, that I'm personally doing is I do a lot of work in Israel. Uh, we've created a fund with a number of the incubators in Israel, the Startup Nation, to raise money because these companies are not going to start to suffer. Uh, so to get their employees back, get people to work, um, and to make sure that they don't lose momentum. Uh, and this is uh, this this is a trying time for everybody. And uh, the, again, very important. Just and I'll say, talk to people who you know, tell them what's going on. And again, if you know people in Israel, just drop them notes. Just say how you doing. I, I do it. I have a, I have a group of probably. 20, 30 people, I do it to once a week. And I get responses back and I respond to them. And you know, many of them are going to funerals on a regular basis, as Alex said. You're, you're bearing 1,300 people. It's a small country. It's, it'd be like, what was it, 56,000 Americans di died or something, maybe it's even more. Er everybody knows somebody. And, and even if you don't, I, I, in, in 2011, I did a conference in Israel and I'm watching CNN, and the person that coordinated the conference for us, and this was a conference on medical technology, the person who, who, who was being interviewed, her daughter was killed. She lives on, on, on the border. Her daughter was killed, and her, her husband was taken taken hostage. You know, I, I was like, I, we worked together. We, we, we spoke regularly for months, and, you know, now you're here. So you immediately drop a note and just basically say, we're thinking of you. We'll see don't again. ask. Don't ask how it's going because it's going terrible. I mean, just you know, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. What can I do for you? Hey, Tom. Uh, this is Danny. So the other thing uh, for the gentleman who asked the question, um, several of us are also working here on the home front, especially with the Hillel's, with what's happening in the college campuses, talking to our young people, talking to our Jewish young people, and really trying, like what Tom was saying getting the word out, trying to support uh, our local Hellos. So I live up here in Boston. I've done some reach out to, to Boston University. I work at Harvard Square, so I'm working with Harvard. And it's horrible on the campus, and it really affects everything that's happening domestically here as far as Israel. So so a lot of us at FJMC, uh, this is a paramount. This is this has consumed me. I was just in Israel myself. So I just came back um, at the end of the summer, and then this happened. So it's very, very personal because the people that I met, I was in a lot, and so the, it's like that. That's like the Cape there. It's like the Jersey Shore, right? So all those people are now on the front. So it's it's consumed me twenty four seven. So at FJMC, we're we're taking this as a high, high, high priority. There's nothing more important, and it's domestic and international. It's affecting us here at home. Unfortunately, but it is so. So, so Dan's thanks, making, Dan, right. Dan's making, that's one of the things. First, as we put into a, our first toolkit, very important. If you are a graduate of a university, if you have got kids in a university, you've got a grandkids in the university. If you ever drove by a university, start pepper them with, with emails that you are that you that you you're, you're requesting that they keep the Jewish community safe, and that and put pressure on it. and that. That pressure has worked. I mean, on a number of the Ivy League schools have already cracked, and they're doing special programs far too late. Um, you know, just make sure the kids are safe, and that you know. And if you want to see Jewish students come to your your college, you've got to provide the you know the the the, the safety for them. And again, if you've written any checks to any universities, get on top of them and just you know let them know. You don't have to be Les Wexner pulled his money out of, out of Harvard. I, I, I'm worried about sending my child or my grandchild going to your college. I can't promote your college to Jewish students. I know 
some people on this call have been work for universities. Um, I'm fortunate I work for a university that my university is, even though it's, it's Christian, is the most pro-Israel university in, in the in the country probably. Um, but uh, others, you know, let them know this is this is serious. I mean, these kids to are being harassed. One more, one more experience. Again, talking with people, you're living, you're talking with people. Uh, a young lady, two children, 18 and 14 years old, and she started to talk about what's happened with teenager. And finally, she's so afraid for her son. She take her son and daughter and move for a couple of weeks to, um, to Cyprus because she thinks her son, particularly 14 years old boy, who can speak Arabic, Hebrew, English, looking all this news for any channel, she afraid he can lose mind. School was closed. It means think about what these kids, or particularly teenagers, are doing. Suddenly all activity done, no friend, only internet. That's why it's another issue with this young, young generation. Thank you, Alex, for your time this evening and your continued support of the FJMC. Uh, have a pleasant evening and uh, our support for Israel continues.